What's going on, guys? Wait, wait that's not how it goes. Wait. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. We're doing a book haul. I, how long has it been since we've done one of these? It's a like, long time. This is like, I don't even know. We do this every time. I do this wait, every we time. Wait, do, we do what? Forget? We'll just don't do a book haul forever. Oh, that's true. And then I have 10 bajillion books. Wait, wait. I want to try it again. What up, y'all? We're doing a book haul, baby. I did it right. Ah. Why is this? Oh, because I'm slapping myself at the same time. <laughs> That's why I was like, why does it sound so flabby? All right, that makes sense. So, do we know how many? Around 60. <laughs> around 60. I could count it. Well, you made 60 new ones. That was including ones in there. 50-ish. I don't know. We got like a whole table of books, and I don't know where we're going to put them once we start going through them. Probably um, have to move them at some point. So we're, we have a few videos coming up, just to let you know. Um, this big book haul, I'm going to be doing an on-haul and then I moved my library, half of it, to a different room and made you myself- You moved your, which one? The red? The red books. The red books. Uh, to a different library and it's gonna be a room all to myself. Wait, I'm not allowed in there? You can. I but know only with going. your permission. No. But um, it's, it has, a, it's it, a nice little room that we hardly ever use. It has like the nicest couch Seriously, in the house. it has like the nicest couch and it has like lots of cushions. And it's nice and dark. Yeah. It's a great room. It has room. blackout um, It has a fireplace. And a fireplace. <laughs> We'd never it's go It's a great, in there. it's like my favorite room in the house that I've, I never go into. It's because like. It's the opposite side of the house. Well that and because the um, internet doesn't go there very easily. Yeah, so also. We literally moved the bookshelf from to the furthest place possible in the house, minus like the garage. Mm -hmm. But that would be the next step. Would be the garage. Anyway, but, we're talking a lot. We have yeah, a lot of books. We got a lot of books. Through. Let's the get into it. The first book I see is our April um, book club book. Yeah. I hate this cover. I did end up buying the physical copy of it, Shadow of the Conqueror by Shad Brooks. I'm really liking this so far. I'm like halfway through it. He already read it. Um, I did. I it doubt great. this video is going to be out. We'll see. I doubt it'll be out by the book club though. If you're curious um, about reading it, I would recommend it. I think it's a great book. I think it's it's fantasy. Um, I'm a lit RPG type of book liker, and it's not very lit RPG, but it's it's fantasy. definitely fantasy. I and mean, it's good and. Uh, Shad is a YouTuber that does like medieval things and stuff like that. And he talks about like sword fighting and weapons and, you know, it's good. It has a lot of that in it. Yeah. The combat's yeah. pretty good. Um, the story's interesting. Very interesting. I really like the way the story's told. Mm -hmm, I too. like the characters. He's very good at writing characters. They're all unique. Um, I mean, the audiobook is good too because it's the same uh, man and woman that do... Uh, all of Branderson books, Brand Branderson, whatever. Oh, you thought you did that on purpose? <laughs> yeah, that was not on purpose. <laughs> no. What? Um. So yeah, I really like it so far. I don't really want to tell you much about it because literally, I feel like if you know the premise, it would spoil it. I, I, that's why. It's, so. That's why I just said it has some adult themes. It's definitely an adult book. But it's good. Uh, it may have some triggering things in there for for sensitive people, but um, yes, it's great. Well, that's one down. <laughs> you want me to grab one? I'll grab no, one. No, time out. No, you have an order? Something. Okay, jeez. Book two is another book I'm currently reading, and that's Tomie by Junji Ito. I showed you the opposite side. I forget that... It's Japanese. Japanese books you read backwards. No, you read it in a different direction. Opposite of U.S. books. There you go. There so, you go. Tomie is like a succubus type story. I'm like halfway through it. Um, it's a manga, but it's it's very adult. So it's not as epic as something like Death Note or Full Metal Alchemist or anything like that, but it's enjoyable and I'm liking it. Um, I have other Junji Ito around here. Let's find him. So that's Tomie. I also have, I think that's Uzumaki. Uzumaki? Yeah. Spiral. So Uzumaki. Oh shoot, I thought I was holding it the wrong I forget what this is. See, I told you it's opposite. A small fog bound town on the east coast, no, on the coast of Japan is cursed. According to uh, Saito, the withdrawn boyfriend of teenager uh, Goshima, their town is haunted not by a person, but by a pattern. 
Uzumaki the Spiral. I heard this one's pretty creepy. I don't know. I I don't I have a I want to be creeped out by books, but I'm very rarely creeped out by books. And this one even has pictures and I don't know if it's going to be as creepy as people say, but people say it's pretty creepy. Um, I don't hear that Tomie is as creepy, but this one I hear is. And I just love these additions. Like, aren't these additions so freaking cool? They're very nice. They all go I think together. There's one more over there's here. There's one more. Um, can you grab it? <laughs> no, it's stuck to the other Please. book. <laughs> okay. So, spoiler, I also got Gyo. They all match and they're all beautiful. And um, I've been in a manga mood. I haven't read Tomie since we got back from vacation, but I want to pick it up again. This one is Gyo. It looks like it has some sort of monster thing on the back. But it says, the floating smell of death hangs over the island. What is it? A strange legged fish appears on the scene. So begins Tadashi and Kaiori, Kaiori's spiral into the horror and stench of the sea. Creepiest masterpiece of horror manga ever. So we'll see how that is. If I like these three books, I might continue reading this author's other stuff. Nice. Um, Where's the, where are we going next? I don't know. I got so many piles. Just pick a pile. I read this book already. As the rest of the world, I hate this cover. I think it's garbage. Let me see. Let me be the judge. You don't hate it that much. It's not bad. It's not I bad just, at all. It's flat and ugly. Like, it just... The original covers were so much cooler. It looks like a tattoo. Eh. Like like a dot tattoo. So I already read this book. I enjoyed it. Does it not match the rest of the covers? No. Hmm. So I read it. I enjoyed Ooh, it. Ooh, look at that though. Uh, yeah, it look has Look at the cool... inside of that. Oh yeah, we ne oh, there there's no none. naked so far. But There's I the like naked. the naked. Looks good. It's just nice and orange and pretty. Simple. Orange is a great color. My second favorite. Um... But yeah, I'm going to talk about this book more in my April wrap-up. I'll hold it. Oh, okay. But um, you I, read it already? I enjoyed it. Yeah, I didn't like it as much as all of the other books in the uh, Court of Thorns and Roses series, but I did enjoy it. I have, I'll talk about Passionate, more the, violent, sexy, and daring. <laughs> I'll talk about more of the issues later. A true page-turner, USA Today. I do read these books quickly for as big as they are. So I picked up that one. Then I got sent this one, which oh. I ruined. I'm warning you ahead of time. I have to. We're going to fix it, though. Kai I'll Vox fix it. To fix it. I'll fix it. If you know me, if you've been it's on a this gorgeous book channel for any length of time, you know that I'm a germaphobe. And I just realized I didn't get the other thing that went with this. What was that? It's over there somewhere. It's like the bookmark thing. Mm. Anyway, you gonna get it? It's the Octonumi. You um, gonna get it? No, I don't feel like getting up. But there's, it comes with a bookmark that has the same aesthetic as the book, and it also um, has like definitions and character names. I thought that I was think. a separate thing. I thought it came with a bookmark, and then it also came with a no, booklet. No, it is. It looks like a bookmark. Oh, it's about the size of a bookmark. I, yeah, it's not. I don't think it's a bookmark because yeah. it's too thick. It's like one of those wooden. It's like a mini book. In the yeah. shape of a bookmark. It's pretty cool. But um, I ruined More books it. should do that. You know why? Because then you don't have to flip through the back. And also, a lot of times you read a whole book and you don't realize there's a thing at the back of it. And then you're like, there's a thing at the back of it, at the end of it. And then you're like, I hate myself. <laughs> I had to Google everything. <laughs> so I have no idea what this book is about. This book has been like blowing up on BookTube lately and like Instagram and... I just thought it looked cool, so I asked for a copy. Um, yeah, and this is a prologue. Apparently, it's a pretty high fantasy story, but I want to know nothing about it. I, I just need to go into it. It's naked. Beautiful. It is beautiful, and I ruined the edges, so I'm going to have Kaivox fix the edges because, like I was going to say, if you know me at all, I'm a germaphobe, and I wash everything that comes into the house. So when you try to wash certain... Uh, Inks? Certain I guess you can say. Um, sprayed edges, they come off, yeah. which sucks. Um, yeah. But yeah, it is beautiful. Even like the inside pages all have like... It's pretty nice. Really neat stuff. And I'm excited to read it. One of the most beautiful books I have. Um, that one? We could. It's big. It's a I don't big know. Boy. I, I really liked this edition. And well, I... it lo it's so fat <sighs> that it's like... 
the, 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 what is this called? The spine can't even like handle yeah. how big it is. Look at that. It's like, hoo, hoo. that's like the feel that I get from this book. Also, it's arched. Yeah. So what this is, it? is <laughs> the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, classic. This it is, is a, a classic. classic. But I know some people that have read it recently and they really enjoyed it. And I've been wanting to read this book for years. And this is... The, if I physically read this. It would take you 10 years. How'd you know? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Like legit. Yeah, I, I would just stop about like a page in. I'd be like, <laughs> I can't handle this. Um. So this is a book that I got off of Book Depository. Um, because I liked the UK edition better than any of the US editions I found. And, uh... Alright, guess how many pages? 1,022. 462. Wait. Plus this. One, 1,400? I think yeah. that would be the longest book I ever read in my life. 1,462. You can't really, like, base it off of pages, though, because, for instance, if you grab that other book... This one? That one. Th that one? Yeah. It's bigger than this Wait, book. Wait, we, and we has... haven't hauled this? No, I don't oh, think so. Oh, this is the so. new one. Yeah. Okay. ba -da Ha! You all know what this book is. But basically, how many pages is that book? It's like over a thousand. 14,062. Just kidding. Um, 12. 12 something. Yeah. So that's 1,200 pages, and this is 14. But like, look at the size difference. Like... Wait. It's like this much taller than it. Oh, you're saying that size. So like okay. to me, this would be a longer book probably. So you have to base it off of word count. Yeah, the font looks like it's the same. No, yeah. that's a little smaller. I don't but know. I understand what you're saying. Um, so <gasps> this is actually a classic oh that I gourd. want to read, and I'm not usually. Oh my god, the art! Oh map! I'm not usually into classics. Dude, dude. Are you gonna show it? The book, The Naked? All right, first you should take off that. Here's The Naked. It's purple. My first favorite color. And we have. Oh, the map. Where, where are the, crack, the cracked lands? The what? You know, the cracked lands. That's oh. what I call it. I forgot what it's called, though. The actual thing. I don't know. Dude, look at this. Look at this art make. I don't even know who these people are. Show it off. That's got to be the chick that... um. With pattern? <sighs> no. Her, the, the older one that, like, they can't say She's it. not older, so how could she be the older one? <gasps> I spit on it. I'm sorry. You have to return it now. Anyway. Look at this. Beautiful art. Is it the same art on the back? I don't know. <gasps> this is awesome. This is some good art. Look at that. It's beautiful. Is there anything cool on the inside? But I don't know who these peeps are. Oh, there are some yeah. cool things. It's just like the other books. That every chapter, there was usually like a, a picture with Not the chapter. Not every chapter. Okay, Mick. Like every chapter. Jeez. Anyway, we still have to read book three before we get this. Is to book this is book four? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought this was the next book. No. Oh, no. That's why we don't know who these people are. All right. Put, put the cover back on. All right. What's next? This. The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. So this sounds kind of boring, but I heard it's really good. And I think it's like a vampire story. Maybe you I could be wrong. Read this in that. Breathtakingly suspenseful and beautifully written, the historian is a story of a young woman plunged, plunged into a labyrinth where the secrets of her family's past connect to an inconceivable evil. What's so funny? I thought you said plunged. I did, I, uh, by pl accident. Plunged. 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 The dark 15th century reign of Vlad the Impaler and a time-defying pact that may have kept his awful work alive through the ages. The search for the truth becomes an adventure of monumental proportions, taking us from monasteries and dusty libraries to the capitals of uh, Eastern Europe. So I hear it's very well written and like super hard to put down. I've read a few um, book reviews on it or seen a few book reviews and it sounded interesting. Can I see it? Oh, okay. That is a mustache. I thought that was a woman. I thought it was a woman as well until I saw it and I was like, I think that's a mustache. Or am I seeing things? This one's next. 
The Silent Companions. I also bought this on Book Depository and I thought I was buying a different cover. Don't you love that? Like I Book Depository, you have to be careful because as much as they're awesome because you can get other editions of books like I can get UK editions sent for free but they don't always send you the right cover because I ordered one that was like a white cover and they sent me this one which really sucks because I hate the US cover of this book so Is much. Is this it? It's so ugly. This no. Is the US cover? It's like doll heads or something weird. Why is that? That's creepy. I like it. Newly married, newly widowed uh, Elsie is sent to see out her pregnancy at her late husband's crumbling country estate, The Bridge. With her new servants resentful and the local villagers actively hostile, uh, Elsie has her only husband, no, Elsie only has her husband's awkward cousin for company, or so she thinks. For inside her new home lies a mysterious wooden figure, a silent companion that bears an unsettling resemblance to Elsie herself. It's supposed to be like a creepy, I don't know if it's ghosty, but like a creepy story. I've been wanting to read something creepy so like much lately, and I just don't know why I haven't. So I have a small book. We did um, at Christmas time a book swap type deal. I may have already hauled this book. Spoilers, I may have hauled you haven't. some of these You have books. not. I've never seen this book in my life. So, so you have then not I this. should probably have Black Sun out here to haul because I got it at the same time. But I uh -huh. don't. That book sucked anyway. So I got that with this. Sorry for the person that sent it to me. But we did a book swap. For Christmas and this was one of the books that um, she sent me I just read it oh. it was not very good the murders of Molly Southbourne um the rule is simple don't bleed no it's don't blink it was close though for as long as Molly can remember she's been watching herself die whenever she bleeds another Molly is born identical to her in every way and intent on her destruction Molly's parents trained her well. She knows every way to kill herself. She knows how to butcher Molly's for easy disposal, but she also knows that as long as she survives, she'll be hunted. No matter how well she follows the rules, eventually the Molly's will find her. Dude, this just sounds so weird and cool. Like, I'm down for it. And it's, it's short. You so could, short. You could read it on a, in like a, a couple hours. Yeah. Like 100 pages-ish. So that sounds neat. I finally got book one of the Remnant Chronicles because I've had book three forever because... Now see, this is a bad cover. This is a freaking terrible cover. Did you read another one? Is that up? So no. What happened was, I, I've told this story before, oh so God. I apologize in advance, but... This is disgusting. I had all three books in my book outlet order one day, and when I hit submit, Books one and two sold out, and I got book three instead, and that was the only one I got. And um, I had not bought book one and two, but this is book one. I hear really, really, really good things about this. Like I don't hear anyone say they dislike this series. You like this cover? It's not too bad. Look at how she's holding the sword. It doesn't even make sense. She's holding the blade like this. You understand? You can't cut. Mm. You'd have to like do this. Or like this. Like, look at how she's holding that blade. It's disgusting. Anyway. That disgusts me. Shad would be very upset at that, okay? So, even people that don't normally read romance or fantasy, I don't know if it has romance, but people that don't normally read books like this say they still like it, so I have hope for it. She flees on her wedding day. She steals ancient documents from the Chancellor's secret collection. Spoilers. She's pursued by bounty hunters sent by her own father. Oh, spoilers. She's, I almost said Princess Leia. It's Princess Leia. Pretty close. First daughter of the House of Morrigan. The Kingdom of Morrigan is steeped in tradition and the stories of, of, of a bygone world, but some tradition... I should have stopped. It's okay, yeah. Traditions Leia can't abide, having to marry someone she's never met to secure a political alliance. Fed up and ready for a new life, she escapes to a distant village on the morning of her wedding. Uh, blah, I don't know. I hear it's good. Want to read it. Um, should we get rid of these books? We're starting yeah, throw them in the garbage. Throw them out. Throw them in the garbage. You see how he's holding the sword? Correctly. 
and therefore he can cut somebody. Do you really think with Shad sword. would ever allow someone like on their cover without holding a sword correctly, though? Yeah, no, I don't. Because if you're writing a book about somebody using a sword, you you you. Ah. This book, I got a book outlet. I did an order kind of a while ago now, um, and I never hauled anything, and it came super damaged, as half of my books do from them, but they're cheap, so it's a I pretty, guess. pretty, like, holographic, cool holographic Can't complain, thing going on. so Trail of Lightning. This is the same author that wrote Black Sun, which we did not hmm. like too Can much. But I've heard really good things about this book, and pretty much everyone that I know that has read both likes this one better. Um, I also have some patrons that I talk to that like this book a lot, so I have high hopes for it. I really like the cover. I think it's really cool. Really? Um, yep, yep. I'm shocked by that. Why? Look at how cool the Look at the cool lightning shining through. It's it's like holographic. It look, Can they see that? It looks like a Pokemon, yeah. like a Pokemon card or something. Um, and then you got like some cool layering here with the text and her. Um, you know, like it just it just makes it interesting. And she looks like a badass. Well, most of the world has drowned beneath the sudden rising waters of a climate apocalypse. I don't know how to say her name. I'll uh, do it. Where is it? Point to it. Dinata? Dinata? Dinata. Hi, hi. Formerly, the Navajo Reservation has oh. been reborn. The gods and heroes of legend walk the land, but so do monsters. That's why we can't say it, though, because it's... Yeah, uh, Maggie is that kind of monster hunter, a supernaturally gifted killer. When a small town needs help finding a missing girl, Maggie is her last best hope. But what Maggie uncovers about the monster is much more terrifying than anything she could ever imagine. I don't want to know anymore. Um, it sounds interesting, and it sounds fantasy, but I'm interested. I really want to read it. It sounds like we don't we don't see a lot of uh, like at least we don't read a lot of Native American yeah. like inspired books. It's it's interesting. Um, I think that was one of the coolest things about Twilight was like the oh they had the res. the Native American like things like the, the the you know it was most likely it was like fake like made up stuff but i'm sure that they have a ton of lore and like magic and all that stuff you know that yeah. they could tap into for like cool books like brazil brazil has a ton of weird magic you know it's a lot of voodoo stuff too i'm excited you want to read it maybe when you finally go to read it and never and about uh, never years from now yeah then I got this on book, I think all of these are part of my book outlet order, but I've got How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. Haig. Um, I read The Humans by this author and didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I, I think I gave it about a three. But this one sounded interesting to me. So it says, Tom Hazard has a dangerous secret. He may look like an ordinary 41-year-old, but because of a rare condition, he's been alive for centuries. From performing with Shakespeare to sharing cocktails with F. Scott Fitzgerald, Tom has seen a lot. But now, after over 400 years of reinventing himself to escape detection, he just wants an ordinary life. The only rule he has to follow is don't fall in love. When Tom catches the eye of a captivating woman, everything begins to unravel. Caught between the danger of discovery and the desire to build a real life, Tom learns that the thing he can't have might be the thing that can save him. It's about losing yourself and finding yourself and blah, blah, blah. It was interesting until they added in the love thing. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, that seems cool. Yeah, there's a love story. And then story. it was just Yay. like, I was like, oh, great. It's, and that's going to be the main, that's the thing that's going to save him. You know, like the I'm one cool thing. With it. The if one it's thing done he, well. The one thing he can't have is the one thing that can save him. Yeah. Then we saw this movie on Netflix and I really liked it and I hear the book is good so I wanted to read Bird Box. Um, you enjoyed the movie too. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it I had a lot of loopholes. Yeah. But, you know, it was a one-time watch. It I was don't good. know how this differs and I want to find out and it was a short book so I figured one of these days I'll read it and find out how it differs from the movie. Um, I hear that the ending is a little different. I hope so, because um, I think that was like the the weakest part of the really of the thing. But I hear that also um, spoilers while we're still holding this book up. I hear that it also ends kind of open ended, like the show did. 
that you, you never really find out like what's going on. So as long as I know that ahead of time, I'm okay. Um, can no we do more something? spoilers, so I'm interested in, in reading it. What? Can we do something about it? About the dog, cat? The cat screaming. Can do, do you that? guys care about the cat screaming? They can't respond to us, Meek. <laughs> something terrifying that must not be seen. One glimpse and a person is driven to deadly violence. No one knows what it is or where it came from. Deadly violence or do they kill themselves? I don't know. Oh, yeah, you're right. They do get, like, super aggressive and... I don't know. I guess some of them did get violent toward others. Five years after it began. Wait. What? Which one am I thinking of? I was thinking of the other one. No, I was thinking it's of this Bird one. Box. Bird Box is the one. Where they have to wear the blindfold. They can't. Because like if they see this thing, it makes them go nuts. And like some people like kill themselves. And uh -huh. Some people like kill others, I guess. The cat's really loud. I know. Did you want your mommy? Ew, she's gonna drool. Ew, she just did it. <laughs> she loves me so much. Anyway, um, I really thought like this uh, movie was interesting and I liked it a lot, so I wanna read it. Go put that there. Then, I, want, I want this one next. Okay. Night Dragon. Dragon of Nights. That book is book three of Shadow of the Fox. Oh, Shadow of the Fox with Yumiko. Does that have mm -hmm. Yumiko in it? Mm -hmm. Nice. So I can't really talk too much about it, but it's like the stereotypical um, anime type story where the, there's like the pieces that have to be hidden from the bad guys, pieces of scroll that have to be hidden. In it's order like to it's save like Dragon world. Ball, you know, Journey to really, the West or whatever. Really, because when you have them all together, you get to grant a uh, a wish is granted from a dragon or something. Very like anime, and I'm loving it so far. I read the first two. This is the third one, and I can't wait to finish it. You want to show the naked? Did I you did. show it? Oh yeah, I it was did. Adorable. I'm ahead of time. Ahead of time. Night of the Dragon. <gasps> they summon the dragon. Maybe peas and carrots. Oh yeah. Too good to be true. Too good to be true. Oh, this is a book of the month. Yep, it was one of my March picks. Um. Not gonna lie, I have not been loving the book of the month picks lately, and I've pretty much just getting been pretty much just getting their romance and thriller ones because those are the ones that like seem the best to me. That's, um, that's impossible. The romance and, and the romance you can't they can't be good. Yes, they can. Literally impossible. The only romance ever that was good was none of them. Sky Starling is overjoyed when her boyfriend Burke proposes after a whirlwind courtship. Though Sky seems to have the world at her fingertips, she's smart, beautiful, and from a well-off family, she's also battling crippling OCD ever since her mother's death when she's been when she was 11 and her romantic relationships have suffered as a result. But now Burke, handsome, older, and more emotionally mature than any man she's ever met before, says he wants her forever except Burke isn't who he claims to be and interspersed letters to his therapist reveal the truth. He's happily married and using sky for his own deceptive ends. In a third perspective set 30 years earlier, a scrappy 17 year old named Heather is determined to end things with Burke, a local bad boy. So yeah, I forgot this book is told in three sections or three points of view, points of view one in the past and then his letters and then like your main character and like all the stories kind of like come together. Um, it sounded interesting and I like this cover. Yo, I just came up with the best concept for a book title. What? That's deep. I Think like this. It. Best concept for a book title. Ready? Three points of view. That's stupid. Why? Because why would that be good? Because it means like it's talking about like three points of view. And it's exactly oh, I like get this. It. You're saying of you. you. I got it. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. It's pretty good, right? So this is my girl NK Jemison. She wrote the fifth Element. season. Fifth, fifth season. season. Um and I I'm kinda nervous though because I got this book at, for like ten bucks on Book of the Month. Um, but People that like her work say they like this one the least, which I'm kind of sad about because I was pretty excited to read it. 
Yeah, I got a damaged copy. Mm. It came like all shredded up on the bottom. But I didn't care enough to make them send me another one. Um, I like the color scheme. Are you really gonna leave already after yelling at me for 20 minutes? I like the color scheme. Don't worry, she's gonna jump down so that she could then yell, yell at, at you. I think she just died. I think, <laughs> I think she just died. Um, in Manhattan, a young grad student gets off the train and realizes he doesn't remember who he is, where he's from, or even his own name. But he can sense the beating heart of the city, see its history, and feel its power. In the Bronx, a Lenap gallery director uh, discovers strange graffiti scattered throughout the city, so beautiful and powerful, it's as if paint is literally calling to her. In Brooklyn, a politician and mother finds she can hear the songs of the city pulsing to the beat of her Louboutin heels. And they're not the only ones. Every city or every great city has a soul. Some are ancient myths and others are as new and destructive as children. Right. So, that says Louboutin. Louboutin. Boutin. I don't know. I got this purely because she was the author and I, I loved her other story. So I zoned out. This one. Yerg. Year. This time next year. Oh, the, this is another one. I have a lot of book of the month ones. It's been a while since we did a book haul. Don't you remember? Yeah, I remember. Oh, I like this color. I like Ooh. the cream and the gray. That looks really nice. I don't remember what this one's about at all. Well, is that the synapse? Yeah. I think it's a romance. I don't want it. I don't want it. Their lives began together, but their worlds couldn't be more different. Minnie Cooper knows two things with certainty, that her New Year's birthday is unlucky and that it's all because of Quinn, a man she never met. Their mothers gave birth to them at the same hospital just after midnight on New Year's Day, but Quinn was given the cash prize for being the first baby born in 1990, and the name Minnie was meant to have as well. With luck like that, it's no wonder each of her birthdays has been more of a disaster than the one before. So they guess. run into each other. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Why would you buy this? A moving, joyful love story. Because I like love stories. When was the last time you gave a love story a five or above? Very rarely, but I enjoy then them Then why sometimes. read them? Because they're good, like, fluffy, easy reads, It's not dude. true. It's true. They may be fluffy. Raise your hand if you like romance. Yeah, being fluffy and, and easy are not Sometimes good you need things. that. You just need some feel-good, fluffy, I've never easy. needed that. Well, I have. All right. Touche. Okay. Are you fluffy and <laughs> I am. And easy? I'm fluffy and easy. So therefore, like, it's not a good thing. Trust me. I know. I love this cover. Was that a dead thing? I don't know. I just saw that for the first time ever. What? It's the main thing on the page. It's a big blob on the on the, the, the So on the, hit it. I've um I found out about this book on Instagram randomly and it sounded pretty cool. It's a sci-fi. With okay. no tomorrow, what are we capable of today? On the eve of his best friend's wedding, Michael is warned by an old classmate, now a NASA scientist, that a gamma ray burst from a nearby exploding star will hit the Earth the following morning at 11.13. There's a lot to take in there. That, that, was, a, that was a loaded paragraph. An okay. incident that will irrevocably destroy the ozone layer, disrupt the food chain, and ultimately prove cataclysmic for all life on the planet. Michael and the groom-to-be Drew laugh off the prediction as a demented joke. However, at precisely 11.13 the next day, a blinding light in the sky disrupt, disrupts Drew's wedding. I don't want to know what happens. Yeah. It just sounds neat. Like, sounds interesting. I don't read very many, like, poke -pos poke Pokemon? I thought Pokemon. you were going to say poke something. Post-apocalyptic books, but, like, as the stuff is happening, usually it's, like, after the fact or, like, you get, like, the beginning... And the event in that sign, it seems cool. And it seems pretty quick to read. It's like 300 pages. What? I see five book of the month books over yeah. there. I have a lot of them. Um, should we put this here? Yes. That's a good spot. We still... Ooh, I see Vampire the Masquerade. Isn't this a, a game? I don't know. It is. It's a game. I have it. We have it. We have the game. It was free on PlayStation. Um... So I actually recently got this in the mail. Um, they sent it to me for free. I don't think it's an advanced copy, is it? Why did yet? you press it? I'm trying press to like it. see the date. <laughs> Let me I'm sorry, but I, my brain was like, what is she? 
<laughs> I thought you were like trying to click on it or something. Double tap it to open it up. I want to see if it's out yet. Oh, that was funny, man. Oh, it's actually not out. In... No, it, no, it, it is. It came out, out in June of last year. You can buy it if you <laughs> want it. So they just sent this to me like the other day, though. It says, one of the most popular role-playing properties in the world gets new life with this trio. Oh, yeah. It's a tabletop. It's a tabletop game. Oh. Yes. Okay. That's how I've heard of it. And, with and it's a video game, too. A trio of horror novellas set in Vampire the Masquerade's World of Darkness by three brilliant talents. Okay. So, cool, 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 cool. Um, Maybe we don't have the game. Maybe I'm thinking of another vampire game. These three authors... Um, I can't say their names. Genevieve Gornicek, Cassandra Kao, and Caitlin Starling. I'm so sorry if I'm screwing that up. Um, but yeah, I just love vampires. So it's books. like a vampire uh, tabletop game. Like the D &D. subtle horror and infernal politics of the world of darkness are shown in a new light in Walk Among Us, a collection of three novellas that show the terror, hunger, and power of the kindred as you've never seen them before. Um, yeah, three very different stories from these ama amazing voices, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't tell you much, but I thought the cover was kind of cool and I like vampire stories. So that's why when they asked me if I wanted it, I said, yes, you I didn't play the tabletop game. I didn't realize it was a tabletop game, but we like games like that. You so play it? maybe, but then you're going to have to learn a whole new D20 system. It's probably D20. I'm not sure if it is. Can we just make it like D&D? D &D? No. <laughs> and play that way? That's not how that works. <laughs> Darn it. It's like Call of Cthulhu is a lot more like you don't want to fight. You, if you do end up getting into a fight, you're probably going to die. And yeah. there's like an insanity meter and stuff. Oh, and I don't like that. It's all this like it's very more mental. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, clink. Oh, here we go. Another one, baby. Oh, Whoa, like are all, all of those. these? Yeah. Oh, my God. Book of the Month picks. I mean, hey, maybe this, some of these. Is this another love one? This is a thriller, I think. I'm going to leave. It's called Girla. Girl A. Oh, Girla. Oh, it's like a gorilla. That's where they get that from. It's a gorilla. It's about a gorilla. <laughs> what are you doing? Read it. <laughs> Lex Gracie doesn't want to think about her family. She doesn't want to think about growing up in her parents' house of horrors. And she doesn't want to think about her identity as Girl A, the girl who escaped. The eldest sister who freed her older brother and younger siblings. It's been easy enough to avoid her parents. Her father never made it out of the mess he created. And her mother spent the rest of her life behind bars. But when her mother dies in prison and leaves Lex and her siblings, the family home, she can't run from her past any longer. What happens, though? Are you Tale asking me? I don't know. I haven't read it yet. And survival becomes a gripping psychological family story about shifting alliances and betrayals of sibling relations. Oh my God! Why would you buy? Why would you buy this book? That sounds so boring. Um, because it seemed like the best pick of the that month. You want to just not get a book? Because Isn't that like it's an not option? worth it. Yeah. I want to keep all the book of the months together. So I have. I didn't realize. That's that, another one. What the hell? There's a bunch over there. Oh. So I have a different copy of that too. Oh, this one? Yeah. So we'll skip that. Is down. it that? Yeah. It's an arc. I got okay. an arc of it and they sent me a final copy of it. it I didn't there. realize. Put it there. Why? We we're going to skip it, you said. No, I'll skip that one later. Oh. Huh. I didn't realize that. Um, you I bought didn't it already? Haul the original one. I didn't buy either of these, they were mm. sent to me. Oh, that's not a book book of the month. No. Okay. Right. La, 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 la. Oh my god, that's a book of the month as well. What the hell is happening? Oh my god, all three of those are book of the months. What the hell is going on? It's, is that all you buy now is book of the month? Pretty much. Jeez. Oh, both I can't of those. See this. What is it? Oh, you gotta show it up close, baby. No, don't just leave it in. Look at it. Yes. So this one came out pretty recently. I love this. These end papers. It's like old school wallpaper. Mmm, I like it too. So we should get a wallpaper. No. Oh, all right. So you don't like wallpaper that much. Ren Sutherland's reckless use of magic has cost her everything. Okay, all right. She's been dismissed from the Queen's Guard and separated from her best friend, the uh, the girl she loves. So okay. when a leather a leather when a letter <laughs> arrives from a reclusive lord asking mm -hmm. Ren to come to his estate, 
um, to cure her servant, to cure his servant of a mysterious illness, she seizes her chance to redeem herself. The mansion is crumbling. Icy winds haunt the caved-in halls, and Ren's eccentric host forbids her from leaving her room after dark. Worse, her patient isn't a servant at all, but Hal, the infamous reaper of somewhere, and her kingdom's sworn enemy. Blah, blah, blah. I hear that this book is, like, kind of creepy and, like, just very atmospheric. Utter magic, stunning prose, carefully rendered, addictive, blah, 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 gothic-type story. So, I'm down to read it. That oh, this is the wayward children. How did you know that? I'm impressed. I can tell by the, the styling of the cover. So that one is Across the Green Grass Fields. I think this is one of the ones that you don't have to technically read in order. I could be wrong, but I think it's about like horses or something. This is also a, uh, what is it called? Early copy. Yeah, it came out though. January 2021. So this is an actual sequel to the other ones? Yeah, well, right, yeah. So we can't really talk about you it. You can, because I think it's a standalone. Like, you can read it by itself. Okay. Um, so her doorway, it's a world filled with centaurs, kelpies, and other magical equines. A world that expects its human visitors to step up and be heroes. So, like, the one cool thing about all these books is, like, every world has their own set of rules and their own, like, way of living and just... They're interesting. Um, some of these books I like better than others. I've heard very mixed stuff about this one, so I'll have to see. Oh my god, that book! I want to read that book so badly. This one, all right. Yes. Like no one wants to read this. What with is it me. called? I'll read it with you. I have like tried Hill and tried Creek. and tried to get like us to read it as a buddy read. Why can't every anyone ever ask me? I don't know. You might. You I'm not. A, I'm like not a this. buddy. Apparently. It was supposed to be a simple publicity stunt. So basically, this story... Oh, look at those end pa those pages. I mean, what are those called? What is that? Deckled edges. Oh, uh, that looks cool. Hey, wait, what's this? Is a fold-out? Yeah. Cool. Uh... At the end of a dark prairie road, nearly forgotten in the Kansas countryside... Why are you is... holding it like that? Who holds a book like that? Me. You're like... Is the it's Finch weird. House. For years, it has remained empty, overgrown, and abandoned. Soon the door will be opened for the first time in decades, but something is waiting, lurking in the shadows, anxious to meet its new guests. When, um, so basically, I think it's four horror novel writers who get invited to stay at this house on Halloween, and it's like live streamed. And creepy stuff happens. That's all I know about it. Sounds interesting. Yeah. I've heard it's really creepy, and I've, I've been wanting a creepy story, and I heard that it's... Well, let's save that one for October. I heard that it's actually a ghost story, hopefully. Listen. And I hate when ghost stories are supposed to be ghost stories, and they're not. Let's 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 save that one for October. That's so far. I know, but we I want a, a creepy book in October. That would be fun. We never read creepy books in October, you know? It's true. So, Deadly Education by Naomi, Naomi Novik. It's actually a Deadly Education. Excuse me. Everyone knows about this book by now. It's beautiful. Um, it is very pretty. Ooh, that is. Have you never opened this? I don't think so. Wow. You can crack it open. Oh, look at that. The inside is cool. I know. Look at that. Look at that. You got ruined. Go nice. Figure. Just simple black. No, nothing on the front. But look at the inside. Ooh. It's like a coliseum or something. Oh, no. It's a machine. Oh, it's like a like a building. The Scolo Man's cross section. It's a building. There's so some I think cool, it's a magical school there's like setting. Some, really? I think. Look at my goosebumps. I got goosebumps. Let me read it. Okay, hold on. Let me let me put it back together. Oh no. Okay, hold on. Let me check the back. Oh, another another cool picture. It's like an orrery. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, is it in the back? No. It's in the front? Yeah. I decided that Orion Lake needs to die after the second time he saved my life. Everyone loves Orion. Everyone else, that is. Far as I'm concerned, he can keep his flashy combat magic to himself. I'm not joining his pack of adoring fans. I don't need help surviving the Scolomance, even if they do. 
Um, forget the hordes of monsters and cursed artifacts. I'm probably the most dangerous thing in this place. Just give me a chance and I'll level mountains and kill untold millions. Make myself the dark queen of the world. At least that's what the world expects. Do you want me to keep going? No, I'm I'm interested. You're invested? I'm interested. Right. That you sounds, want to read this next month? That book sounds club? pretty cool, book right? Club next month? That sounds next pretty month cool. I don't know. We'll talk about it later. I'm not making any promises right now. Come on, though. What do you guys think? Let's be fair. Ooh, wow. Look at this. What is this? Little Women. It's oh, a classic. Like that movie? Yeah, but I hear the book's really good really? and the movie. I like Big Women. I hear it's very good. I don't, um, I don't trust little women. I saw this edition um, book depository. It is a cute book. It's a cute book. It's very easy to read probably because it looks like big words. Um, it's a very nice little, nice book. I, I really like it. it. Yeah, it's pretty cheap too. I think it was like $12 from book depository and it's a nice edition. So we don't really need to talk so when about I what knew, it is. I knew I wanted to read it because obviously the movie came out and I've been wanting to watch the movie, but I was like, you know what? I never read the original classic. This is surprisingly light for as big of a book it is. I can't English. Um, it's like 750 pages almost. Look at these cute papers. I don't know what Emma this Watson story's about. Emma Watson is in it, right? Is it that one? Yeah. Mm. I hear it's really good. And I, is, it, is it the one that has the guy from Dune? I think so. They had the main character. So you'll watch the movie with me, but just do not read the book. As long as I don't have to pay for the movie, yes, I'll watch it. All right. After so we finish the Marvel movies. Little Women. Ooh, this is a pretty cover. I like it. It's like a water city, but it also has like a water crown above it. And this is a big back. There's a lot of writing. It's a big old back. Froze, the Frozen Crown, that's what it's, it's called. It's out now, I think. Let me see. Mm. Yeah, January. 121. Askia As As became heir to the Frozen Crown of Saravesh because of her devotion to her people. But her realm is facing a threat she cannot defeat by sheer will alone. The Mad Emperor of the Roven Empire has unleashed a horde of invading soldiers to enslave her lands. For months, her warriors have waged a valiant stealth battle, um, yet they cannot stop the enemy's advancement. Running out of time, she sets sail for a sun-drenched uh, Vishir, the neighboring land to the south, to seek help from its ruler, Emperor Arman. So, do you want me to keep going? It doesn't sound interesting at all to me. I, don't, I didn't get anything from that. I have no idea what it's about. It's so. like, yeah, me neither. Politics. It just seems boring. The cover's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Those droplets are too big though, but still. Like that's like a little crown. It's like a little toy, like a D&D &D tabletop thing. Ah, oh, this looks corny. So that's book three. Uh, is this the one that has like 40,000 books or something? No, there's only three books, I believe. Um, Not Even Bones is the first book. Oh, I like the the leather uh, look yeah. to it it's not actual like leather but it has that like you know leather skin wrap thing to it and the red looks nice too Did i can't i can't, can't really, really talk about it talk about it but i wanted to show you guys they sent it to me um back when this book first came out and i have all three books now that i need to read and they sounded interesting to me um, something about hunting monsters for their parts or something like hmm. that. Like Monster Hunter. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, I like I this one. I love this cover. This one's cool. Uh, what is it called? The Story of Silence. We didn't even tell them what the name of that one was. Oh, yeah. When Villains Rise. Cheese. Wait, When Villains Rise Cheese? <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, somebody opened this one already. Oh, it's, it's a pink and black. You don't see that very often. No, you never really see, you don't see a lot of pink on covers. I just thought this cover was so cool and then it sounded cool. So I was like, I'm buying it. I don't hear many the, people. Wait, was it the story of what? Silence. Silence is a name. Oh, like the name. name. Okay, yeah. But like, I, I don't hear anyone talk about this book. Um, there was once long ago a foolish king who decreed that women should not and would not inherit. 
Thus, when a girl child was born to Lord Cador, the Merlin-based fighter of dragons and Earl of Cornwall, he secreted her away <laughs> Sounds terrible. to be raised a boy so that the family land and honor would remain intact. That child's name was Silence. Silence must find her own place in a medieval world that is determined to place restrictions of gender and class upon them. With dreams of knighthood and the lonely heart to answer, Silence sets out to define themselves. Soon their silence will be ended. What follows is a tale of knights and dragons, of bards, legend, and dashing strangers within, with hidden secrets. Um, taking the original French legend as his starting point, Alex Myers weaves a rich story of identity and heart. It just, I just like, I wanted a fantasy story with like all these elements and they talked about dragons and knights and daring tales and I was like, yes, that sounds cool. There was once a lord who raised his daughter as a boy so the family would continue to rule. But what became as deceit, or began as deceit was found to be truth. And on that day, a legend was born. Sounds cool. So I got my stack <laughs> over here of... Book of the Month picks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven Book of the Months. That's all we got left for Book of the Months. Let's get a quick grab one of yours. How come you've been doing all of mine's? Hello, Pox. I may have Is hauled this. Is book this. three? Yeah. Okay. I, I never may read have, it. Uh, I may have hauled this. We have not read it yet. We read two, though. Yeah. I like these books. Here, here's a question. Do you remember what happened? Yeah. I have no freaking idea what happened. I remember, I, like, I, the premise, but I don't remember what happened at the end. Like, we always forget. Yeah. Like, the end of books, we never remember. I'm pretty sure that this will jog your memory. Because, like, it's a middle grade. It's not meant for adults. Yeah. It's so. for... It's for Babies. They usually jog your memory with it a little bit. It is written like for babies. I can't really tell you about this one because it's book three, but I enjoy this series. I think it's well written for a middle grade. Here's I don't what we usually... can talk about. We can say that it involves magic and that's it. It's it's magic. It's whimsical magic. It's very like there's no hard and, and set rules for the magic. It's very like... But it's mm, crazy stuff happens. Yeah. Whoa! There's some cool characters in it, and I like the overall story. Really, like mm. I think the story's fun. Yeah, yeah. It could definitely make for a good TV show. Mm. It has a very like fun, like, like you know, teenage TV show. I feel like it was way overhyped when it first came out. Everyone was like, "This is the next Harry Potter." It is nowhere near Harry Potter level. It's not as epic. No way. But. It's fun. I enjoy it, and I plan on continuing it, obviously. This, I was super looking forward to because Echoes? I love ghost stories, Ooh, and it is a buttload of ghost stories. It's heavy. It's, a, it's, it's different books or different stories. Yeah. Oh, I hate books like that. I'm going to... To be fair, they're... I don't like them. To be fair, made no sense in that. I just wanted Ooh. to see it. Oh, that's creepy, though. I don't want to show you that. Wait, wait, I you'll see have it. You'll have nightmares. <laughs> that is creepy. It's very creepy. Not cool, dude. Not cool. Don't put that in a book. I love ghost stories, and um, this is just a bunch of ghost stories. Cool. Different authors or all the same? No, different. Oh, a ton of authors. Here you go, guys, if you want to see who is in this. Let me see the front. Okay. So there's 24. Plus 24. No, it's this plus 24. 30 authors. 30 authors. Oh, look, Garth Nix. Oh, yeah, I know that one. Sean and McGuire. Oh, yeah, I know Paul that one. Paul Tremblay. A.C. Wise. Uh, I'm just picking out the people I know. Alice Hoffman. There's some, some pretty big names in there. I'm excited. I just love ghost stories. So here's the arc that I was talking about that I got of this book before that, Same you one. know, yeah. I'm a jerk and didn't read on time. Why? Why would you put it in that it orientation? Perfectly. Um, can we, can we get a pizza? Pizza? Like, can we order it now? Maybe. Thanks. This book, I don't know why I did this to myself, but I did, um. Why did you grab it? First off. If you're going to leave it there. <laughs> this book, guys. <laughs> the, the cover of the US edition creeps me out so much that I could not buy it. Oh, where is it? I want to see it. 
So I went online and got the UK edition because the UK edition is much cooler looking. Meek, he's constipated, Meek. I hate this cover. Meek, he's, he's just constipated So a much. Bit. Why, it's so it's creepy. Cre why is it creepy? It's creepy because he's just like, I can't tell if he's pooping it's or not crying creepy. or like has a headache or like whatever. I like this cover much but better. But is it supposed to be creepy or is it supposed to it's be... It's supposed to be like... Suppo I, I don't know. It's, it's a story about four friends. I don't really want to know too much. But apparently it like wrecks your heart and stomps on it and makes you like want to die. It's so sad. Why would I want to read that? Not really, but... It's supposedly amazing, the story, but very sad at the same time. And I don't know why I did that to myself because I cry over it's everything. It's okay. Just don't read it. But. Problem solved. I liked this cover way better. I don't really want to know what it's about, but I have to read it when I guess I'm in the mood to cry a lot. Krusty Krab pizza is the pizza. I wonder if they could, somebody could make a place called Krusty Krab Pizza. Wonder, Probably not. I wonder if it's like copyrighted. Spindle Fire. So I think this is a um, Sleeping Beauty type retelling. Um, it all started with the burning of spindles. No, it all started with a curse. Half-sisters Isabel and Aurora are, popu are popular, polar opposites. Isabel is the king's headstrong, illegitimate daughter whose sight was t uh, tithed by fairies. Aurora, beautiful and sheltered, was tied her sense of touch and voice on the same day. Despite their differences, the sisters have always been extremely close. So I got this book on Book Outlet, um, and I've heard since that it's not that great, which kind of sucks because I love me a good fairy tale retelling, but we'll see how it is. Then I got, I think, an... Is this another fairy tale retelling? Oh, that one. I like that cover. The color scheme is really nice. Like, it's cool. I also got this on Book Outlet. The Spinning Spinner of Dreams. Do you want to show the cover? Yeah. Yes, I do want to show the cover. Am I allowed to? Ooh. It's purple. Is that Ooh. green? No, it's not. Is it green? It's like blue green. Yeah. Yeah, it is. No, it's like blue silver, I would say. Maybe green silver? Green. Like a greenish, just a light green silver. Like it's obviously full silver, but with a little bit of green. It's a, it's a very nice color scheme. Scheme, as some people like to say. Right, it's Meek. Amelie, Annalise Merriweather, though kind, smart, and curious, is terribly lonely. Cursed at birth by the devious fate spinner, Annalise has always lived a solitary life with her loving parents. Despite her anxiety, she does her best to ignore the cruel neighbors who blame her for the state of their desolate town. But the black mark on her hand won't be ignored. Now when the monster living within it, which seems to have an agenda of its own, grows more unpredictable each day. Is this like Naruto? Yeah, it's Naruto. Or as... Could be pretty good. Same thing though. After I bought this on Book Outlet, which because to me it sounded good, I heard it's not so good. But I hope people are wrong, and it's good. Oh no! What is that? I heard this was good. Odd and True by Cat Winters. So disappointing. Oh my god. The cover is terrible. They don't even like match. I mean, like, like the images, it's obviously two separate images photoshopped together, but they're like, look at these soft edges around the outside. And like, she's not actually holding that ax. She's not actually holding the ax, guys. Look at her hands. It's not holding that ax. It's not. This is why he's here, apparently, to just make fun of every cover. No, I only make fun of the ones that need, need the making fun of, okay? The book, maybe the book is great, but the, the cover. Odette always claimed that her mother slayed monsters and that she and her sister were destined for the same adventures. When Trujin was younger, she'd cling to her sister's stories, believing every tale she spun. But that was before Ode disappeared and left true. Um, I'll get mean? it odd and true. 
who has been uh, who has been struggling to walk ever since a childhood illness to fend for herself. Even though True now wonders if her sister fed her lies all those years, she can feel a dark force approaching their small town. In 1909, two years after vanishing, Od or Odd appears at their doorstep with a suitcase full of weapons and a promise to rescue True from the incoming monsters. Um, Odd seems haunted, searching for something she refuses to talk about. True goes along with her sister in the hopes of finding their long-missing mother, but neither girl knows what they'll find. Blah, blah, blah. I think it sounds pretty cool. I'm excited to read it. Anyone else? Let yeah, but, me know. But that cover, though. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Let's the get first into it. book I see is our April um, book club book. Yeah. I hate this cover. I hate this cover. I hate this cover. Who cares? That looks Chinese. I think it, I don't know what it is. It is heavy, or what it is. So I got Under Heaven by Guy Gabriel. Gabriel K? Yeah, Gabriel, Gabriel. Um, That doesn't give a synopsis. There's no synopsis? Yeah, seriously, what is this about? Well, that's it. That's all you guys get. What about up here? The... Innovative novels, a multi-award winning author, Guy Gabriel Kay, effortlessly meld together history and the fantastic. In Under Heaven, Kay tells a story of honor and power, uh, this time in a setting that evokes the dazzling um, Tang Dynasty of the 8th century, of 8th century China. Cool, cool, cool. I mean, that's, I guess, as good as we're going to get for info. Yeah. The arrangement. <sighs> I heard about this book. Uh, a while ago, and I found it on Book Outlet once again for really cheap, so I decided to get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Natalie, a young artist, uh, nope, a young art student in New York City, is struggling to pay her bills when a friend makes a suggestion. Why not go online and find a sugar daddy, a wealthy older man who will pay her for dates and even give her a monthly allowance? Lots of girls do it, Nat learns. Um, all that's required is looking pretty and hanging on his every word. Sexual favors are optional. Though more than 30 years her senior, Gabe, a handsome corporate finance attorney, seems like the perfect candidate, and within a month, they're madly in love. At least Nat is. Gabe has already, already has a family who he has no intention of leaving. So when he abruptly ends things, Nat can't let go. But Gabe's not about to let his sugar baby destroy his perfect life. What's supposed to be a mutually beneficial agreement devolves into a nightmare of deception, obsession, and when the body is found, a body is found near Gabe's posh Upper East Side apartment, murder. Emotionally powerful and packed with page-turning suspense. Why would you buy that? That sounds cool. It's disgusting. Dude, you're so S judgy. It just seems like smut. Just smutty what? smut no, smut. No, it's not. Now, does that all that happen at, right at the beginning? Probably. I would hope, right? I just spit on you. Thanks. I would hope that it would happen right at the beginning, so then, then you find I'll forget all about it by the time I go to read it. Don't worry, I won't. Then I got this one on Book Outlet also. It sounded really interesting. So this is kind of like a biography, but I hear that it's written... What's it called? Romantic Outlaws. Oh, they have mustaches? No. No. Dude, what's up with um, these? Look at those eyes. They're so scary. So this is supposedly the story of Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, and her mother, and like their lives. Like so, hmm. it says the groundbreaking dual bio biography brings to life a pioneering English feminist and the daughter she never knew, Mary Wool. Wollen Stonecraft, Wool Stonecraft, and Mary Shelley have each been the subject of numerous biographies, yet no one has ever examined their lives in one book until now. Two courageous women who should have shared their lives but instead shared a powerful literary and feminist legacy, taking readers on a vivid journey across revolutionary France, blah, blah, blah. I just hear it's really neat. Like these, for some reason, the mother and daughter didn't know each other, but they ended up being very similar. And you kind of get to know a little bit about each of their lives throughout this. It seemed neat. At least I thought so. I didn't know it would be so big, though. <laughs> You're never going to read this. I hope so. I mean, I hope I will. Uh, you hope? <laughs> <laughs> but 
This book has ridiculous praise. Do not get mad at this cover. He's already mad at this cover. No, I'm not. Oh. Why would I be mad at it? Oh! Yo, you were hiding it. You were going, you were held it like this, and I couldn't see what was going on. And then all of a sudden, it has a stupid cut. Is this, is this a pre-book one? This is, like a, this is a final copy. I'm going to throw this out when you can't see it. I'm going to burn this stupid cover. And what's up with the author's picture? It's weird. He has a flower in front of him and he's reading a newspaper on an old, an old tiny chair. Why would you do that? Is this the author? I, yeah, I guess. He looks, so, he looks lost. I think these books were originally, or these are a collection of short stories, but all set like together. I please, believe. Please don't do this. Just don't do this. Look. Why? Why? Why I do this? Make the page go gone. an extra, extra quarter inch. Just a little bit. Just a little bit further. Please. So I believe these were originally like printed online and then they finally compiled them into a book. This is just book one, but I hear that it's really good. I've heard for years that this book is really good and I finally found it on Book Outlet. Frightening, fascinating, and addictive. What would you do if the world outside was deadly and the air you breathed could kill? And you lived in a place where every birth required a death and the choices you made could save lives or destroy them. This is Jules' story. This is the world of woe. I hear it's really good. Epic story of surviving in all odds. And there's no other explanation. What is it with these books having no synopses? But let me know down below if you've read this and if you like it, because I hear it's really good from like everybody. I was trying to turn off the heat. I grabbed it. What's this one called? The Devouring Gray. I also got that on Book Outlet and I hear very mixed things about it. Cover's not good. It's got a lot of weird random pictures that I've never noticed until right now. Pictures? Like skull, sword, or dagger, hand. Yeah, yeah. There's a little that. gargoyle at the top yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a, a strange cover. The actual cover may be nice though. Ooh, the inside's kind of cool. It's a nice cool. little gray with mm -hmm. a gr with green, 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 blue. Look at this. Metallic and it's then like trees. there's a tree. I took this picture the other day. I didn't show you? I'll show you, look, I'll show you the picture. Oh yeah, you did, you did. I did, but now I got a show must. Look, I literally, literally, I literally took the same exact picture the other day. Don't mind my broken screen protector, please. Look at it. It's pretty similar. It's really similar. <laughs> I'm already mad. Oh no, she's 17. At the, after the death of her sister, 17 year old- How did I know she was a she? <laughs> How did I know she was a she? Violet Saunders finds herself dragged to Four Paths, New York. Violet may be a newcomer, but she soon learns her mother isn't. They belong to one of the revered founding families of the town where stone bells hang above every doorbell and danger lurk doorway, excuse me, and danger lurks in the depths of the woods. For generations, Dustin uh, Hawthor Hawthorne's bloodline has protected four paths from the gray, a lifeless dimension that imprins imprisons a brutal monster. After Justin fails to inherit his family's powers, his mother's determined to keep this humiliation a secret. Then there's another person lost her hand to an accident that left her stranded in the grave for days. She's vowed revenge on the person who abandoned her. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. It just I hear it's creepy and atmospheric, but I have heard very mixed reviews, so. I don't understand what it's about. Me neither. Creepy Woods. And we haven't talked about that one yet. So, sort of, we have, because I, I did start reading this book once. Um, but I only had an ebook copy of it that I got for free and I liked it, but I stopped reading it for some reason. And then I saw it on book outlet for like $3 and I was like, well, I'm going to read it someday. So I might as well buy it. It was interesting. The plot. There's a crow, little embossed crow on the cover. See it. And then also it has a map on the inside. Pretty nice. This looks like there's some more pictures or something in here, right? Come on, baby. Oh, part oh, separated into different parts. Um, is it on the back? No, those are quotes. Here you go. Fee abides by one rule. Look after your own. 
Um, as a future chieftain of a shunned cast of mercy killers, she relies on her wits and bone magic drawn from the teeth of dead witches to protect her band. The crows take more abuse than coin, so when they're called to collect the royal dead, Fee hopes they'll find payout of a lifetime. So yeah, I remember now. So there's like a group of people that, I guess there's a sickness that some people get and there's a group of people that they call the crows that are immune to the sickness. So when someone's dying from it, they come in and basically take the person like into the afterlife or in, they kill them. Yeah. And then they get rid of the body because it's plagued and everyone else will get sick. But it seemed really neat. Like I, I read probably about 50 or 60 pages and then I don't know why I stopped, but I did stop and uh, I'd like to pick it up again someday. Hmm. I have a hard time reading ebook formats of stuff. Then I picked up The Lady. <laughs> I barely tapped you. <laughs> the Lady Rogue. Um, also on Book Outlet. I'm so much more gentle than you with your like, books. <laughs> Some legends never die. Traveling with her treasure hunting father has always been a dream for Theodora. She's read every book in his library wields an impressive knowledge of the world's most sought after relics and has the ambition, all the ambition in the world. What she doesn't have is her father's permission. That honor goes to her father's 18 year old protege and once upon a time love of Theodora's life, Huck, while, while she's left to sit alone in a hotel in Istanbul. Um, until Huck arrives from an expedition without her father and enlists Theodora's help in rescuing him, Armed with her father's travel journal, the reluctant duo uh, learns that her father has been digging up information on a legend, a legendary magical ring that once belonged to Vlad the Impaler. This is the second mention of Vlad in I'm today's... Cool it. it sounded so neat. Today's book haul. I heard it's pretty good, too. I just noticed that there's a dragon. Really? I don't know if that has huh. anything to do with it. It's very interesting. Then we have this book. I'm pretty sure I never hauled this book, even though it was... You read it. It was a book club pick. I read it. You didn't finish it because I told you not to, I think. Um, I don't even remember. What is it called? Peril? To Sleep in oh, a Sea of Stars. Oh, that's the name. That's the name of the... Yeah, no. Paulini. I don't know. This book was not for me. It was like 700, no, 850 oh, pages. Oh, this is the Aragorn. 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 Author. Ar what is it again? Aragorn? Aragorn. Aragorn. Ar Author. Aragorn is from Lord Legolas. of the Rings. Anyway, do this book, man. If there's one thing I can say for it, it's like Gritty. super beautiful. Yeah. Even the front is just beautiful. I had such high hopes for it, and it bored the crap out of me. I feel like it was way too lengthy and just boring, and I didn't care. And then at the end, you find out there's potential for like 50 billion other books. And I was like, I'm never reading. Any I think, honestly, I'm just done with this author. I don't like Aragon. You didn't like, yeah, you, you've I always hated on them. I don't like this book, so I think I'm done. Sorry, but. It's not your style. Now we have book of the month books. How much time we have left before pizza gets here? I don't know. Eight minutes. That's already been 30 minutes. All right, I've let's start seen... this journey. This book I've seen a lot on BookTube lately, and that's These Violent Delights. Um, I hear people talking about it quite a lot. And I Did anyone notice that I yawned during that? I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But people are really liking it right now. Obviously, I got it on. Do I even need to show these? Because they're, they're all just kind of like the same. Right? Yeah. I obviously got it on Book of the Month. I think it's like a Romeo and Juliet retelling, sort of. Oh, it matches that one. The lady wrote. Yeah. Even with the gold dragon. Do you know what it's about? Ch Japanese? No. Um, Shanghai. So the year is 1926, and Shanghai hums to the tune of debauchery. A blood feud between two gangs runs the streets red, numbing the city to its chaos. At the heart of it all is 18-year-old Juliet Kai Kai a former flapper girl who's returned to begin her duties as the proud heir of the Star Scarlet Gang, a network of criminals far above the law. Their only rivals in power are the White Flowers, who have fought the Scarlets for generations, and behind, behind every move is their heir, Roma Montagov. 
who was Juliet's first love until he betrayed her. So it's literally like a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Ish. Seems interesting enough. I hear really good things about it though, so. Mm. Miracle Creek, I think this is a sci-fi? That's a big old scratch, huh? Is it? Oh yeah, yeah, that came like that. Yeah, it did. Okay, what were we talking about? This guy, we, Our we pizza just, came. just started this. Oh yeah, open this up. The, the cover, you mean? Well, I guess you could do that. It's just the book of the month cover. Mustard. I don't like and it. And blue. It doesn't go well with the cover, in my opinion. Yeah, but the back, look at the back. The back is like completely different than the front. Yeah. It's weird. Uh. You burp all the time. I'm not allowed to burp once. Oh my God, give me this. A oh, that's what you wanted? <laughs> a literary courtroom thriller about an immigrant family and a young single mother accused of killing her autistic son. Miracle Creek is a powerhouse debut about how far we'll go to protect our families and our deepest secrets. So maybe it's not sci-fi at all. <laughs> In rural uh, mir mir Miracle Creek, Virginia, Young and Pac Yu run an experimental medical treatment device called a Miracle Submarine. Um, a there pressurized oxygen chamber that patients enter for therapeutic dives. It's also a respiratory of hopes, a respiratory repository of hopes and dreams. The dream of a mom that her, that her child can be like other kids. The dream of a young doctor desperate to cure his infertility and save his marriage. The dream of the youths themselves, Korean immigrants, immigrants, excuse me, who have come to the United States so their teenage daughter can have a better life. When the oxygen chamber mysteriously explodes, killing two people, all of these dreams shatter with it, and the ensuing murder trial uncovers secrets and lies. This sounds like sci-fi slash science slash mystery all in one. Mm -hmm. That's why I got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People like her. People like her or people like her? Like her. her. Like people alike her. No, legit. Does it mean people like her? I don't know. Like dude. everybody hates, loves Raymond. I don't want to hold it. You hold it. To her adoring fans, Emma Jackson, mm -hmm. aka the Mama Bear, is honest. Is the honest insta mum, who always tells it like it is. To her, <sighs> this, is this is British. To her skeptical husband, a washed up, washed up novelist who knows just how creative Emmy can be with the truth. She is the breadwinning powerhouse, brilliant and mon at monetizing the intimate details of their family life. To one of Emily Emmy's dangerously obsessive followers, she's the woman who has everything but deserves none of it. As Emmy's marriage begins to crack under the strain of her growing success and her moral compass veers wildly off course, she becomes more vulnerable to a very real danger circling ever closer to her family. So I hear that this book is very scary to people that do social media stuff or like YouTube stuff. Oh no. Because it's about like Stalkers. basically you putting your life out there and mm. like people stalking you and stuff. So that sounds creepy. All right. So romance. These two, so I got this book this month. Um, give me that other book. This one? Yeah. So they this, go together? Yeah, well, sort of not really. This is um, one of the April book of the month picks, and then this is the other book by that author. I've been hearing a lot about this book lately, so this was my pick for mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. They're both romances of sort. Okay. This one is um, two people that are like polar opposites, and they're both writers. Um, and I guess they kind of make fun of each other's writings. They're not make fun of them, but they don't think each other's writing styles is difficult. So they go about the task of like, she's going to write his type of book and he's going to write her type of book. And it's That's like interesting. a romance. Mm -hmm. This one, I don't really know a lot about, but it's the same author. Poppy and Alex, Alex and Poppy, they have nothing in common. She's a wild child. Are, he wears khaki. Are you sure that's not... That one? Because you just yes. described the other one as that. She has an insatiable wanderlust. He prefers to stay, stay home with a book. And somehow, ever since a fateful car share from college many years ago, they're very best of friends. Um, until two years ago when they ruined everything and they haven't spoken since. Poppy has everything she should want, but she's stuck in a rut. When somebody uh, asks 
when she was last truly happy, she knows without a doubt that it was on that ill-fated final trip with Alex, and she decides to convince her best friend to take some more vacation together. Lay everything on the table, make it right. So this one seems like it's like a friends to enemies to lovers probably, and this one is like an enemies to lover romance. So they're both probably cute romances that I like and he hates. The Wife Upstairs, I hear this one's really good. Why do all of your books have like these pages tucked in? I didn't do that. They're they all like, like that. that. They're like every single one I've opened has been like that. I thought you've been doing mm -hmm. it. Yeah, they all have like at least one page tucked into the sleeve. I didn't do it. So that one says, meet Jane. Newly arrived to Birmingham, Alabama. Jane is a broke dog walker in Thornfield Estate. Thornfield Estates, a gated community full of McMansions, shiny SUVs, and bored housewives. The kind of place where no one will notice if Jane lifts the discarded something and jewelry off the side tables of her well-heeled clients. Uh, where no one will think to ask Jane her even her real name. Me, Eddie, recently widowed, he has become Thornfield Estates' most mysterious resident ever since his wife, Bay, drowned in a boating accident with her best friend, their bodies lost to the deep. Jane can't help but see an opportunity in Eddie. Not only is he rich, brooding, and handsome, but he could also offer her the kind of protection she craves. Yet as the two fall for each other, Jane is haunted by the legend of Bay, um, an ambitious beauty and successful entrepreneur with a rags-to-riches origin story. How can she, plain Jane, ever measure up? Um, and can Jane win Eddie's heart? So I think, like, the story, what I've heard is, like, she does kind of get with him and finds out that like maybe he has something to do with the death and like he's not really like what he seems and don't read it then you're done no it's interesting this one is a sci-fi this one yeah and i've heard really really good things about it um it's called what an absolutely remarkable thing by hank green it also has a sequel but i hear that you don't need the sequel and it wasn't like fantastic but i don't know um, I hear this one's really good. The Carls just appeared. Roaming through New York City at 3 a.m., 23-year-old April May stumbles upon a giant sculpture. Delighted by its appearance and craftsmanship, like a 10-foot-tall transformer wearing a suit of samurai armor, April and her best friend Andy make a video with it, which Andy uploads to YouTube. The next day, April wakes up to a viral video and a new life. News quickly spreads that there are Carls in dozens of cities around the world, from Beijing to Buenos Aires. And April, um, as their first documentarian, finds herself at the center of an intense in international media spotlight. Seizing the opportunity to make her mark on the world, she now has to deal with the consequences of her new particular brand of fame. So, like, that just sounds interesting to me. Like, these yeah. things popping up, like, all over the place. There's definitely, like... Not, not interesting. Really? Because you're falling asleep here. Um. Beasts of Extraordinary Circumstance. Uh, what, do, what do you know about this? I don't remember anything. <laughs> here you go. I, re I, I bought so many of these so long ago. Orphaned, raised by wolves, and the proud owner of a horned pig named Merlin... Waylon Gray knew he wasn't like other people, but when he single-handedly stopped that tornado on a stormy Christmas day in Oklahoma, he realized just how different he actually was. The tornado was the first of many strange events that seemed to follow Waylon from town to town, although he doesn't like to take credit. As amazing as these powers may appear, they tend to manifest themselves at in inopportune times and places. From freak storms to trees that appear to grow overnight, Waylon's unique abilities are a curiosity at best and at worst a danger to himself and the woman he loves. But Mary doesn't care. Since Waylon saved her from an angry wolf on her 11th birthday, she's known that relationship that a relationship with him isn't without risks. But as anyone who's met Waylon will tell you, once he wanders into your life, you'll wish he'd never leave. Hmm. I, hear, I heard this one's really good. Hmm. So, there's that one. Three more and we're done. The guest list. Um, I've heard this one's okay, but it's from people that read a lot of thrillers, and I don't, so I might like it more than other people. 
Um, on a remote island off the coast of Ireland, guests gather to celebrate the wedding of Jules Keegan and Will Slater. Will is a rising television star, handsome and charming. Jules is, smart, ambitious, is a smart, ambitious magazine publisher. Though the sea is a little choppy and the cell service body, their wedding is everything you'd expect of a young power couple. Blah, blah, blah. Perfection is for plans and people are all too human. It's not long after the cake is cut and the champagne popped that resentments and petty jealousies come out. Worse yet, the latest uh, barometer readings show that weather has shifted from fair to challengeable or changeable, excuse me, and dark clouds are looming overhead. Everyone on the island has a secret. Everyone has a motive and someone won't leave this wedding alive. Oh, weird. I think it's exciting sounding. Yes, yeah, it's, it's different. That's a romance. Yeah. The dating plan. Um, you're right. These are all weird. See? Why are they like that? Tucked in. Ooh, that is glue and a half. What is this one? Woman, Daisy is a software engineer who understands lists and logic better than bosses and boyfriends. Uh, is this like a fake love? Yeah. So like her family wants her to marry someone, but they, she doesn't want to, and neither does the guys. So they pretend to be fiance. And then they fall in love. Probably. So that's the kind of romance it is. Then why read it? I like romance sometimes. It's the same. Leave Hold on. Pick that up. Alone. Pick that up. You can make a little thing there. I like romances. All right. This last one's a thriller. Okay, cool. I think. The Survivors by Jane Harper. Oh, I thought it was called Jane Harper. I always, I, I hate when the name of the author is bigger. Oh, that one's not like that. That one's not tucked. Is this the last one? It is, man. Yeah. It is. Only a million books. Hold that. Kieran Elliott's right, life changed forever on the day a reckless mistake led to a devastating... De okay, cool. We're done here. <laughs> led to devastating consequences. Does this happen to anyone where like their eyes read far faster than they can speak and then nope. you can't talk? No. The guilt that still haunts him resurfaces during a visit with his young family to the small coastal community he once called home. Kieran's parents are struggling in a town where fortunes are forged by the sea. Between them, all, his ab all is his absent brother, Finn. When a body is discovered on the beach, long-held secrets threaten to emerge. A sunken wreck, a missing girl, and questions that have never washed away. Stunning and atmospheric. It's blah, blah, blah. I showed her. I showed her. That's it. Whoo, baby. That next, was a long one. Next will be my unhaul video, which probably will be much shorter because I'm not going to go over synopses. I'm pretty much just going to show you the book and tell you why I'm not keeping it. All right, guys. Thanks for Thank watching. You. If you guys want to support the channel, make sure to check out the uh, Patreon. We have an ex like exclusive Discord attached to that where you do a lot of book stuff, a lot of um, read-alongs yeah. and stuff. Um, and uh, you get early access depending on your tier to certain videos. And um, I think that's about it, right? Leave a comment, let us know if you guys, if you guys have read any of these that we were kind of like, oh, this is weird, if they're actually, actually are yeah, good. Yeah, let me know your, if you've bad. read these, I really do want to know your opinions on any of these, um, so let me know. Any like, just avoid that one, you know, type thing. Yeah. Like, like this thing, that book sucked. Maybe just it'll like, end up on don't my, don't read it. Forget it list. Um, and that's about it. Thanks for watching, leave a comment, do all this stuff, and uh, say bye me. Bye me. Bye bye bye.